Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, this is the second video in this little follow-up series on building these EAR-834 clones. Like I said in the last video, I've been getting tons of emails. Probably get two or three of them a week at least. And some of them end up being like 30, 40 posts long or you know, back and forth trying to figure out what's causing their problems. And in every case so far, it's been because they've ventured off from this layout because they wanted to do something different or they wanted to move the jacks or move the power switch or something and it's created problems. There have been some issues with there's a clone of a clone board I'm calling it that's got an issue with the front ground but I went over that in the last video. Just if you don't know about that go watch that video to make sure you got the board all built right. This one I'm going to show you the how and why of the chassis layout. And yeah, this may not be the prettiest preamp in the world, but if you build it like this and put all the components, the jacks and the wiring and everything like I'm going to show you, it's going to work great. If you do something different and you like put all the capacitors on the bottom of the board so you can mount the board up close to the top and have the tube sticking out or what you uh, you guys are on your own just you can figure out why it's not working and i think going forward when i get emails about people that are building these i'm just going to point them to these videos and say there's your answer go do that and i really don't feel like that i can keep like diagnosing your builds that venture off from this and splitting the boards up and putting toroidal transformers and all. Yeah, just you're on your own. I'm going to show you how to do it where it works. And yeah, if you don't like this, then go read Morgan Jones' book and try to figure out how to make your build work. Anyway, as you can tell, I'm getting a little tired of doing this. Anyway, let's get on with looking at how this chassis is laid out and why I made the decisions I did. So first, let's go over the chassis drilling and layout. So what we do here is we put the front of the board as close to the front of the chassis as we can. And we have the three holes here where the tops of the tubes stick through so you can change the tubes out. We also use every mounting point. I've seen people build these where they just do like the corners and have the center of the board just floating. You want to have this thing nailed down to the chassis as tight as you can, and that's by using every mounting point. We have the transformer back here in this corner, although you could put it over here. I think it's better being in this location over here, and I'll show you why. We have the power switch back here on the top at the back next to the power transformer and I know people want to put it in the front because they think it's more convenient come on guys it's not that hard to reach over and flip the switch back here and there's a good reason why I put it here in the back and I'll show you that as well I have the power LED right here that way I can just put the LED on a couple of little stands off the board and it fits through the hole I mean, you could put this in the front if you really want to because it's DC. It's not going to really cause any problems, but it's just adding more wiring. And if you set this LED up bright enough and use a fairly large one instead of the little tiny one it comes with, you can easily see if the preamp's on or not. In the front, we have the RCA jacks. And then on the back, we have the IC connector. And it's over on the switch side and i'll show you why i do that and then the two holes for the choke are mounted up here near the bottom edge so like i showed you earlier i have the rca jacks and the turntable ground point here on the front of the preamp 
And I know some people are like, that's inconvenient. I don't want it there. I want to put it in the back so that you don't see the cables. Well, here's the reason why I put them in the front. Look how short the signal path wires are between the jack and the board. They're maybe an inch long. And there's no way that this is going to pick up any noise from the AC that's all the way back here in the back of the amplifier. If you run these wires, even with shielded wires, like all the way across the amp and have these jacks back here right next to this choke and this high voltage or this high current AC wiring, you're just asking to pick up noise. The RCA cables or the interconnects being external to the chassis with this metal shielding it is much, much, much less likely to pick up any kind of noise. And you have to remember, this is a super low voltage signal going into this thing. And this tube's got a ton of gain. And so anything you can do to shorten the path between the RCA jack and this first tube or the grid of this first tube and you see it's got a little short trace here. That's what you want. So from where the RCA cable connects to the grid is maybe a couple of inches, maybe three at the most. And again, it's surrounded by this ground plane that's grounded by this. It's another reason to use this front ground point is you're surrounding these input signals with a ground plane that helps shield them from picking up any kind of noise. The other thing I've learned is using a super big, or what I consider a super big, solid copper ground wire is critical. It definitely reduces the noise in these preamps. So this is like a 14 gauge solid you know, ground wire out of some Romex that I go from this ground point and you want to come up here and scrape off the paint and make sure this is really grounded good to the chassis and then it's also where the turntable ground wire hooks up and then you have this heavy copper wire that comes around here. Here's the Mundorf coupling caps that are put on the underside. It says point 0.1 to point 0.15. I go with the point 0.15 which I believe helps the bass response. These are some little audio note caps. What I've been doing on the newer ones, I'm getting a slightly larger cap that has the spacing between the leads that matches the board so that the capacitor can just sit down against the board. I've also learned that slightly larger capacitors voltage wise is not a bad thing as long as it's within reason. So using something like some 50 volt caps isn't a problem and I do think it probably is going to sound a little better but even these little small ones work fine. So let's go to the back of the preamp and let's see if I can get this where we can see what's going on here. So one of the reasons that I put the transformer over on this side of the chassis on the top is this is where the AC connections between the board and the transformer are. And so if you put it on this other side, the twisted AC wires are going to have to come all the way across the chassis over here. And we want these as short as possible and as close to the chassis as like this one's right up against the top and then comes up underneath. And then this one's pulled up. It was just a little easier to solder it on the top side like that. But as you can see, pretty short length. You know, ideally, you might even want to make this shorter and have it connect on the underneath if you're really trying to, you know, make sure that you have as little hum as possible. But, again, that's why it's on this side. Same reason why the IEC connector is on this side is look how short the wire is going from the IEC connector over to the switch. And then the transformer lead comes right off the switch. These are routed up along the top edge of this chassis to help shield it. And then... The safety ground, might be a little hard to see, but right there is the safety ground. And again, super short path from the IC safety ground, you know, the third lug on the plug, to the chassis. See, the other thing that 
people make a mistake is when they try to ground on this end of the board, you're getting the board ground really close to the safety ground. And if you put the safety ground back here on the back, next to the IC connector, look how far away the safety ground is or the board ground. You know, they're electrically connected, but there is a little bit of resistance in this aluminum chassis, and that helps isolate this board ground from the, you know, household safety ground here in the back. You can also see I've got a little capacitor here across the switch, and that helps eliminate the pop when you turn it on and off, especially when you turn it off if you still only got the amp going. And so I put that in all of mine as well. And then the last thing, you can see on this amp how just the very tops of the tubes are sticking out. The ones I'm building now, they stick out about like that. They're mostly inside the chassis, with just maybe the chrome part sticking up above that gives you just enough purchase to be able to like pull them out and replace them. This is done for a reason. If you look at most commercial preamps, they have those little metal shields over the tubes. And I know people are like, well, I want to see the tubes and I'm going to, you know, surface mount the tubes. They put tube sockets on the top and then run wires from the socket down to the board. And that's just lengthening the signal path by adding those wires. It also changes the capacitance a little bit. And we're talking PFs here we're dealing with. And then by having the tubes on some kind of extenders, I've seen people do that. They'll, it's like stick an extender so they can have the tubes sticking up so they can see them. Are we listening to this or are we looking at it? Is, I guess is my question. And that's why when I build these, they're just plain black. You know, they've got the tubes peeking up. The RCA jacks here on the top are directly over the top of the circuit board traces so that the shielded wire, and even though it's just a couple of inches that I run from here to the board, I use shielded wire. It's still keeping it away from this AC that's back there. And one last thing, this transformer is placed like this, not for aesthetic reasons. It's turned this way so that the laminations are going this direction, not in the direction of the tubes, so that it helps keep the noise or the inductance from the transformer from ever getting to the tubes. It's also why the tubes are sitting below this grounded metal chassis is so that the inductance from the transformer isn't picked up by the tubes. They're shielded being inside or below this surface. So if you stick them up exposed like this, you know, I'm sure people, oh yeah, they look nice. I want to see the glow. Well, then the tube's going to pick up the noise. And I actually had somebody email me that was having problems and they said they could put their hand like this and the noise would go away. There was like this pulsing hum. And then they go like that, there's the hum, they put it back, hum's gone, and it's because the tubes were sticking up out of the chassis. So I hope this helps you understand that there is a method to the madness, and I didn't lay this out the way I did, thinking that this looks beautiful. I laid it out like this because this is the best way, I think, to do it, to keep the footprint as small as possible while also keeping the noise that these two preamps are capable of to a minimum. So I think this is a good place to wrap up the video right here. Well, I hope these two videos are helpful to you folks that are having problems with your EAR-834 clones. And for you folks that haven't built one yet, explaining why it's laid out the way it is. And if you want to build one and just listen to it and know it's going to work. If you build it just like this, it's going to work. Again, may not be the prettiest thing on the planet, but man, does it sound good. And every one of these that I've sold, the person has loved them and talked about. I had somebody that was comparing it to a $3,500 phono stage they had bought 
and was like, I cannot believe that this one I bought from you sounds better than that one. I thought it sounded good. And so these things are amazing. And I know there's another website where they talk about doing mods to these things and they're cutting circuit traces and they're, you know, bypassing, you know, they're putting a jumper wire in where the cap goes and all that kind of stuff. I, I just don't think that's necessary. And I honestly haven't done that, so I can't swear that they don't sound better. But this sounds so good. I'm just not interested in doing that. I've got so many other projects. That's just not something I've ventured off into. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video series. Again, it was two fairly short videos. I was going to make it one video, but... It ended up being longer than I thought, so I split it in two videos, one on the board, one on the chassis. Hope that was educational on the thought processes on component layouts and why it's important where you put the power switch, where you put the IEC connector, how the grounds are done, and all that kind of stuff. It's really critical, especially on a high-gain device like these preamps, that all that's done in a certain way or you're going to end up with a noisy product at the end of your build and you're not going to be happy and nobody wants that like I said going forward when I get requests or questions about hey I've got this or that going on with this preamp that I tried to build I'm just going to point you to these videos and then after watching them if there's unanswered questions I'm happy to try to help but again, if you've ventured off from this layout and done something completely different, I just, I, can't, I don't have time to try to diagnose the problems on a layout that I know isn't ideal. So, be warned. Anyway, if you enjoyed the series, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video. Thanks to all you Patreon folks, and also folks that make donations to my website. Really appreciate that. If you do have questions, put them on the forum. Maybe some folks can help you there. And until next time, have a nice day.